of this Cowboys team is ebbing. Don't tell me what to do. They've been pantsed in the schoolyard today is what they've been. Ain't got no time to lose. Welcome back to First Take. We are coming to you live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. Hope you all had a wonderful holiday. How about them Bills? Buffalo comes into Jerry's World on Thanksgiving Day and left with their ninth win of the season, handing the Cowboys a big holiday L. Louis Riddick still here with mm -hmm. us. Stephen A., do you think yesterday's game was more good Bills or bad Cowboys? I think it was good Bills because I think that I looked at Josh Allen and I'm, I'm very impressed with this kid. Um, he's got some wheels on him. I think he needs to learn how to slide a little bit more uh, so he can avoid taking some of those hits. Um, I forgot who it was that mentioned he looked like a poor man's version of a Cam Newton, certainly not on that level, but having that kind of potential. And I like it. This kid's got an arm on him. He can drill that football. He can hit it into tight spaces. Um, he's making good decisions. Uh, his coach, uh, they're a disciplined team. Um, they obviously run the football effectively. Cole Beasley, we're not mentioning him enough. He goes back into Dallas. Uh, he's your slot dude that was replaced by Randall Cobb. He's now a Buffalo Bills, and he showed up there yesterday and showed out. But this kid, Josh Allen, is taking a lot of heat. We know that he came into the league with some controversy on draft night. Remember, I had spoken to him during that time. I haven't spoken to him since. But obviously, he's one of those kids with an incredible level of potential to be as young as he is. Good size, great arm strength with the ability to run the football and also making the kind of decisions of all the things that he did yesterday. Time of possession was 33-26 to 26 in favor of the Buffalo Bills, and this guy did not turn the ball over one single time on a, in a nationally televised game on Thanksgiving afternoon against the Dallas Cowboys. I like him. I think he's got a lot of promise, and I think defensively we see what the Buffalo Bills are capable of doing. The Dallas Cowboys scored in the opening drive, really didn't score, didn't score really again until mm -hmm. it didn't matter anymore. They were completely shut down thereafter, so we know what the defense can do. But offensively, this kid, if he shows the ability not to beat himself like he did yesterday, we're seeing why the Buffalo Bills are en route to the playoffs. I got to give credit where credit is due. This, this football team oh, – I'm sorry. Look, Let me just say this real quick. Mm -hmm. This football team is a direct reflection of their head coach. Direct reflection. And anyone who knows Sean McDermott will, will tell you this. He may be one of the most disciplined individuals that you will ever meet in mm -hmm. any walk of life. I worked with him in Philadelphia, spent a lot of time talking with him about football, both philosophically and about schemes, strategies, tactics. He learned under Andy Reid. He learned under the late, great Jim Johnson. His football team is direct reflection of him. They don't lose who they are in the course of a game or in the course of a season. They play exactly to who they are. They are a blue collar, run the football, let our quarterback get outside the pocket and use his athletic ability. Hopefully, we'll continue to improve his accuracy. Get some complimentary weapons. Play the blitzing game on defense, which means when we get you in third and long, we're going to send people from everywhere. And we'll stick in it and stick in it because we're not going to beat ourselves. That's how they play every week. And that's what gives them a shot in a one-game, one-off type series, mm -hmm. which is the playoffs. That's why Buffalo is going to be here to be reckoned with. Don't fall asleep on them. Because they are more times than not not going to beat themselves. You're going to have to be just better than them. Yeah. And then when you look at them 1 through 53, they've got some good players. This is a team that not to, to be taken serious. Don't just dis dismiss them and say they played a weak schedule and they didn't really play anybody until the Cowboys. They played New That'd England be a mistake. Tough. Exactly. By the way, and, and, hurt, and they, they do it every time. Right. They do it every time. The they the way, play them tough. And by the way, Max Lewis, we like Gore. We appreciate Gore. Absolutely. In his career. But Singletary is their dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. they're a better team with him on the field. Gore's 112 years old. I mean, you know. At and Devin's point. tough. Yes. Um, pound for pound, tough. Not taking anything away from the Bills. I like what you said about like the way they're using Josh Allen. He's not Lamar Jackson because he's not as accurate as Lamar Jackson. But they, uh, you know, you, we were talking about it earlier. They're trying to do the right thing mm -hmm. with him the way the mm -hmm. Ravens like, okay, let's build around Lamar. He's not as accurate. Um, Dak interception. Yeah. Strip sack. I don't even blame that. You can't look. A strip sack happens when a defensive player makes a good play. You know, he had plenty of time, but still the defensive player yeah. made a good. He should, he should have, his, the alarm bell should have been going off. And yet still I'll give credit to the defense mm -hmm. for the strip sack, but not for the interception, not for the bad throws. 
Uh, you you want to say that it's good Bills because of um, because of a, a a blocked field goal attempt or a blocked kick? Okay, I'll give it to you, but not just a missed field goal. Like, they were both. There was good Bills and there was bad Cowboys, but why did the Cowboys lose? I have to say, bad Cowboys. You know, like, I have to say that. There, there were too many mistakes mm -hmm. out on the field for a team that does not yet have a single That's quality good. win all year. You make those mistakes. And then even when they go for it on fourth and one, um, and it works. Everyone knows why they did that on fourth and one and at work. The Cowboys I'm talking about now. Yeah, yeah. Because Jason Garrett's been criticized for being too passive. But see, that, that's the cool thing about football. And that's why really these arguments and these kind of debates, you really cannot arrive at a definitive conclusion about was it, one, was it good this or bad that. Because I'll tell you this, many mistakes are caused by things that maybe you can see on film, maybe you can't. But the game is so nuanced. Buffalo, I'm... Buffalo is very well cooked. Look, some of these sacks, some of these strip sacks are because of pressures that were dialed up that it specifically attacked certain protections that they were running and certain people. That's coaching. Yeah. That is more so Buffalo than Dallas is concerned. But a missed field. Like, I'll give That's you that. True. But Those a missed field goal. Right. But, I mean, this, 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 game, guy's feet, you this know. game had so much interwoven in it that you have to give Buffalo its credit. You cannot just dismiss it and say it was bad Dallas. And I think Buffalo is going to prove that as the year Lewis, goes on. can I ask you a question? Because I know you have to go after this break. And I want to get back to the Cowboys. Yeah. How do you fix them? The Cowboys? Yeah. Well, one, you start at the top. You have to have someone who connects with and resonates with and utilizes this football team in a different way than Jason and his staff are utilizing it. That's number one. Number two, do not just exonerate the players on this, on this football team overall. There are certain players who have been who have been paid and asked to perform in big moments, Molly, that haven't performed. Mm -hmm. They're just haven't. I, are, you, are you looking at Dak? Are you looking at Zeke? Because I know Zeke hasn't lived up to expectations, but you know, I don't know you if know that's because they're playing from behind. For me specifically, it's it's the very much so up and down nature of the defense that bothers okay. me. Where one week they're dominating people, the next week you have Aaron Jones from Green Bay just run the ball down their throat. The Rams last year run the ball down their throat, and you're going, why? Oh. You know you're better than that. And the Listen, linebackers should I'm be not, way better than that. That's they right. Are. Listen, I got to have fun with the Cowboys, all this stuff. I am not playing games. Fire Jason Garrett. Take Rashad. You have two defensive players. why court. right now, Steve? Because, because you have to send a message. What's happening is not good enough, and I can't get rid of the players at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to shake things up. And, oh, by the way, you've got two guys on the defensive side of the ball. Rob Marinelli is your defensive coordinator, but Rashad contributes to that, and he's the one that puts Rashad out front and sends him to talk to the media because Rob Marinelli has been around long enough. He's got his shine. He mm -hmm. is what he is, all right? He knows he's not going to be a head coach again. You take Rashad. This is the guy you put in front and center to speak to the media about the defensive side of the ball. You take him, you put him in that position because you have nothing to worry about on the defensive side of the ball because Rob Marinelli is already there with you. Right, I tell you why, the, and the two of you is doing that. So you take a guy, you just send a message. No one is safe. This offseason, there will be changes, but we're not going to wait. We're going to send the message right now. I know he's not going to do it, but it is a mistake that Jerry Jones has not done this, I'll tell you, and they will rue the day that they did not. I'll tell you why I find that argument more and more convincing the more I think about it. This is a debate show, but I'll, I'll, let me say this. What do you have to lose? The logic of my position is you were never going to win the Super Bowl with Jason Garrett anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to lose? Is it an unstable organization that changes head coaches every other year? No, he's been there for a long time. You don't really, it's not like, oh, another coaching change. What do you have to lose? You're not going to win the Super Bowl anyway, but what you could do is not just send a message, but maybe juice the team a little bit True. right now to get them over the hump. That happens. We saw it with the Browns last year. Yeah. It happens sometimes. And, you know, and I, 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 would, I would tend to start leaning that way myself because the more I watch Jason, the more I'm telling you, if I put myself back into those days where I'm sitting there in a team meeting room listening to him, I would probably be sitting White there noise. like, man, yeah. come on. Like, no. And Chris Richard is going to be a head coach. Yeah. So it's just a why wouldn't you? Hugh Jackson was gone. Yeah. Greg Williams comes up in there. You got rid of Hugh Jackson and your offensive coordinator and Todd Haley. Greg Williams comes up in there, okay? Freddie Kitchens was able to isolate his focus on Baker Mayfield yeah. and that offense, and they ended last season looking yeah. pretty Sometimes decent. the we interim coach, coach is the that. answer, Lewis, too. Yeah. Great Sometimes. to have you with you us. Bet. Thank Absolutely. you for the insight perspective, Thank as you. always. Brady's offense has many questions that need answers, but we'll tell you why. It's actually Deshaun Watson who has more to prove in the Sunday night battle. Mm -hmm. After the break, there he is. It's Timo.